So when he fell, he fell full force onto the floor, smashed, he smashed his face clean into the floor. So not only did we have a ladder with state of overdose, now we didn't know whether he'd knocked himself out by his fall. We was absolutely panicking, because it's never happened to me before that. That was the first time it had happened. But we didn't use naloxone because we didn't even know what naloxone was at that point. Naloxone is the antidote to heroin. Fuck there, mate. John? John, are you alright? John, mate, are you alright though? John? An overdose is um, a, a, a state of when a, a person either injects too much of the drug or hasn't got a, hasn't got a tolerance level for it. Naloxone is the drug that's used to reverse opiate overdoses. It stimulates the body and sits on a receptor to prevent the effects of the opiates. So in fact it actually reverses the effects of opiates. The drug name of naloxone is naloxone and the actual trade name is Narcan. And it's a drug that can be given as an injection into the muscles. Opiates are a particular group of drugs like morphine or codeine that include methadone, or heroin, those sort of things, all that act centrally on the body to cause unconsciousness or lack of breathing. Well, naloxone is a, a drug that counteracts the effects of uh, an opiate. We actually use it on the ambulances um, to uh, reverse the effects of an opiate overdose. Uh, it can also be used in the community to do that as well. It was what would be useful is finding out what the person has taken. I mean, different drugs will affect people in different ways. I don't know if you've ever been there when someone's overdosed, but you start to make a horrible noise. It's, it's the kind of noise where they can't breathe. They call it the death rattle. That's what it's known as, the death rattle. What's the matter with him? It's a little bit mashed. What, I think he might be a bit more than mashed, you know. John? John! 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 John, John, mate. Open your eyes, mate. Open your eyes. John. Yeah, John. John, John, wait. Yeah. You better phone an ambulance, mate. The pupils will be very small. He was absolutely white, like a milk ball. His lips was blue, his skin was white, all sticky and clammy. But first of all, we thought he was dead. What you tend to find is that the person will become unconscious. They may look very, very pale. The lips may be blue, and they may even be blue. Um, you could try arousing the person by, by uh, shaking them or pinching their ear. Um, they may not respond to that. You may uh, you know, want to try to just give them a slight slap, see if they, they will come round if you slap the face, say. Um, but they, you know, if they're not responding, then that is perhaps a sign that somebody has taken something that has caused them to go into unconsciousness. And if you can keep trying to rouse them. You need to be there when the paramedics get there to know, to let them know what he's had and how much he's taken. And if you have injected naloxone into him, they need to know all this. So it's essential that you do not uh, leave him alone, he or she alone, once they've gone into a state of overdose. Feel him. Doesn't feel right. John! Yeah, I have John! 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 Yeah, has somebody ring a fucking ambulance? If you suspect someone has overdosed, then you should phone an ambulance. There's there's nothing else um, that you'll be able to do beyond initial measures anyway. Uh, if it turns out that it's not, then that's a good thing. But it's not worth risking waiting and wasting time. Can I have an ambulance, please? If you're actually with somebody and you, you, you believe that they have taken an overdose of opiates, or you are aware they have taken an overdose of opiates, if you phone 999, um, even though that is an emergency number, that does not necessarily mean that the police are going to attend that incident. Um, that has changed now, and what, what tends to occur is the ambulance will be informed, um, providing there is no risks, obvious risks to the crew that is attending. Um, the person is not actually dead, 
or the person is over 16 years old, then there will be no need to inform the police and the ambulance crew will attend and they will treat it as the medical emergency it is. They will not see it as, um, as a, a police issue or a criminal issue. What you tend to do is you, you, you just do a head tilt, chin lift and you just um, prevent any obstruction from the tongue and you can actually look into the airway uh, to see if there's anything in there that could be removed. If anything is obstructing the airway, um, it may be vomit, it may be, you know, the tongue has moved down. You, by tilting the head backwards slightly, you can actually clear the airway. And one way of ensuring a clear airway in somebody who is breathing um, fo following an overdose is to place them into the recovery position. The recovery position is somebody lying on their side so that their airway is clear. Um, the face will be lying you know, to the side um, and hopefully rather than the tongue or anything else falling to the back of the throat, it will fall to the side of the mouth, keeping the airway clear, which is the most important John, thing. John, come on, mate. Sing up, come on, sing up, mate. Up, get him on the floor, get him on the top. Which is why people are best to roll someone onto the side straight away. The exact recovery position doesn't have to be a clinically exact. We, you just want the person on the side so that their airway is clear. Check if he's still breathing. Yeah, he's still breathing. He's all right. Yeah. You also uh, need to look, listen, and feel for the breathing. And this is done by placing your cheek close to the person's mouth and you actually look for the chest rising. You actually observe this for 10 seconds and you see whether they look like they're well perfused. If they're looking very blue, if they look very unwell, then we assume that there is no circulation as well. Then you would commence basic life support. You do 30 chest compressions. These are done in the, um, you, in the mid-sternum region, um, at the centre of the chest, um, and then you'd give two breaths, which is um, is done by the head, head touching lift, and you actually, via mouth to mouth, you breathe into the person's mouth, um, making a seal with your mouth on their mouth, and then you'd give two breaths, and this is the, the, the basic life support procedure, uh, 30 chest compressions to two breaths. And you continue this cycle till the person actually shows signs of breathing on their own um, or starts to show signs of coming round from, from um, the, the, you know, the, uh, the state of not breathing and having no circulation or until medical help arrives. To give the single injection of naloxone that will buy some time for the ambulance service to come and take the patient to hospital where the patient can be assessed and further treatment can be given in hospital. We're losing him. We're losing him. He's going into overdose. What are we going to do till the ambulance gets here? I'll tell you what, I've got some of the rocks on there. Go we'll get it then. You get brain damage within several minutes, up to what four minutes going? after stopping breathing. Oh my, That's where you? the use of the naloxone intramuscular will come in in those couple of minutes to allow the patient's breathing to carry on before professional help in the ambulance service arrives. Uh, the naloxone or Narcan um, actually comes in a container similar to this. Um, when you actually open the packaging, it's, it's actually called a mini jet. Um, you have uh, a plastic outer container that has two covers on it and you have this inner container which actually contains the naloxone substance. Um, this actually screws into place, you actually twist it to screw it in and your needle will also screw into place on the top of the naloxone. Uh, the needle is um, an intramuscular needle. The three, the three main sites where you would put the injection are the quadricep muscles which are the upper thigh, in the deltoid muscle which is at the top of the arm and the, the glutes which are at the buttocks. The, the needle needs to enter into the skin at a 90 degree angle to the actual skin, so it's actually going in in, in that manner. 
the use of a single intramuscular injection of naloxone could certainly save people's lives if they've stopped breathing due to the effects of opiates. There are no real um, downsides to administering the naloxone as well. So even if it's just suspected, if it turns out it isn't, there's, you know, it's not going to be too detrimental no. to the person. So the benefits of administering the naloxone far, far outweigh the fact that someone might get a, a sore arm from the needle going in. Yeah, of course. You know? So yeah. um, if in doubt, just administer. Yeah. Um, and administer the drug. Yeah. That's it. Once naloxone has been given, that will reverse the effects of any opiates in the body and that will last as long as the effects of naloxone uh, will last in the body. Therefore, they may need or ask for methadone or some other opiates. The problem is if you give it at that stage, the naloxone will still prevent methadone acting on the body. So effectively, they will continue to suffer the withdrawal symptoms until the naloxone wears out. We see opiate overdoses quite common in the accident emergency department. Um, they usually are breathing by the time we see them and our main treatment is to try and support the breathing until the opiates have worn out. That may involve observing them for six to eight hours in hospital and they may need further doses of naloxone to support their breathing. This is what I'm telling you now, mate. You cannot have anything now for at least eight hours, mate. You cannot. If you have a dig now, you're going to go over, mate. Listen, listen. When an overdose victim is revived with naloxone, they may be aggressive and want to use more drugs. A common presentation once you've given them naloxone is they don't really remember what's happened, they want to leave hospital at that point and may regret what has happened. Naloxone is a very safe drug to give, it's got no side effects at all. 